American officials in London called him one of the most powerful but least understood men in the British government. And out of all the old China hands involved in the talks over Hong Kong's future, he was by far the toughest. We continue with our series, Hong Kong Back and Beyond, with a talk with Sir Percy Craddock, who served as British ambassador to China from 1978 to 1983. He's also known as a harsh critic of British policy towards Hong Kong and China, since the appointment of the territory's last governor, Chris Patton. He tells us why he feels so strongly about this, and why Britain may not be able to withdraw that honourably from Hong Kong. If you want some tips about dealing with China, some will point you to Sir Percy. His style of diplomacy during the Joint Declaration talks impressed former British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher so much that she appointed the old China hand as her personal foreign affairs advisor. He served from 1984 to 1992. The 74-year-old now tells us his thoughts on what happened before and after the joint declaration was signed. What uh, was it like for Mrs. Thatcher to uh, deal with Deng Xiaoping during the negotiations? I think it was a fairly difficult and intimidating experience for her, though of course she would never admit that. I think both of them were uh, quite impressed by the other. Dung was quite struck by this very forceful lady. Uh, he wasn't accustomed to that. In his setup, there were very few uh, women, if you recall. Uh, and Mrs. Thatcher, for her part, I'm sure, had never encountered anyone quite like Deng Xiaoping before. There was a clash of principle. There was a clash of personalities. Do you think things would have been different if um, relations had been better or warmer? No. I don't think it would have made a hope of the difference, frankly. Uh, the Chinese position was that Hong Kong had to return to them in 1997, and that included administration. They were in a, par in a position to impose their wishes if we didn't agree. Uh, those were the factors uh, that decided it, not a matter of whether uh, one leader got on well with another in a particular interview. Mm -hmm. Now, um, Sir Percy, when the joint declaration was signed, how did you feel witnessing that? Well, I had my moment of pleasure much before that. Uh, when we initialed the declaration, or even before that, uh, at the uh, meeting in late July, uh, 1984, where we broke the back of the negotiations. Because after that meeting, uh, it was clear that we were on the home stretch and that we would get an agreement unless we were very stupid. The rest, the initialing, the signature were simply ceremonies as far as I was concerned. Mm -hmm. We had it in the bag from August onwards. What happened uh, during your visit in 1989, you and Sir Robin? And made a visit to Beijing? Yes, it was a visit to pick up the threads after the disaster of Tiananmen. Britain, of course, had been very shocked by the killings, as other Western governments had been, and had uh, taken part in, joined in various sanctions against uh, China. But at the same time, we had to continue talking to Peking if we were to continue to help Hong Kong. Uh, we couldn't get into a position where we said, we will not talk. Uh, to Peking about Hong Kong because they are not democratic. That would have done Hong Kong no good at all. And our primary responsibility was to do our utmost to protect Hong Kong's future. So we went out to begin talking to the Chinese again and to embark on the very difficult task of trying to get them to concede more directly elected seats in the Hong Kong legislature. But we managed that, and we managed not only an immediate increase in those seats, but a, an agreement for a rising curve which went on into the next century, and which would have assured, and will still assure, Hong Kong a very fair measure of uh, democracy. Uh, so that was accepted by the Chinese. It was extracted with great difficulty, but they did accept it. And the point was that that would stick after 1997, they had put their name to it. 
that, of course, was totally different from the unilateral electoral changes that were attempted later uh, by Mr. Patton and which have come badly unstuck. When Christopher Patton unveiled his blueprint for the reforms, how did you find out about it and how did it make you feel? Well, I learned about it simply in a way that everybody does uh, through the, the press. Uh, I had retired a few months before. I had not been told about the plan uh, before I retired. Indeed, Mr. Patton may not have thought it up when I last saw him, which was May of 1992, uh, so that I learnt about it in the normal way, and uh, I said at the time that it was uh, a very, very serious mistake. And I, uh, as you know, I made my views known about the end of the year, saying that it would end in tears. And what kind of reaction did you get from um, colleagues in the Foreign Office? Did they tell you to just keep quiet and not well, be so critical of the governor and of British policy? The people in the Foreign Office, of course, had been told to keep quiet themselves, uh, so that uh, there was not much reaction uh, from them. But there was certainly on my side a great deal of concern. If you recall, I asked to see the Prime Minister and saw him and told him what I feared would happen. What was his reaction? He, he listened uh, sympathetically, but I didn't think that I was making much impression. So do you think that it was a grave mistake to appoint a politician as Hong Kong's last governor? Appointing a politician was always more difficult because they have to make their name in one way or another. The job for the governor in the last stages was, I think, essentially a job for a tough official who wasn't seeking personal glory and who would conduct a hard rearguard action, because that was all that Hong Kong had to offer at that stage. Whereas politicians, particularly those who wouldn't listen to their advisers, uh, would think that there were great victories to be won over China and great successes to be won for Hong Kong, which was all illusory. Now looking back at the past 15 years, do you think that Britain has been able to withdraw, retreat in a dignified manner? Well, we've handled the, the issue pretty well. It was very difficult, but it was handled reasonably well up to 1992. Of course, have a dignified ceremony at the end of the day. Uh, but the fact is that we could have done more for Hong Kong. And because of British misjudgments, British misreading of the Chinese reactions and the level of Chinese tolerance, Hong Kong will end up with less democracy, less rule of law, less protection than it could have been given. Uh, personally, do you find it disappointing? Yes, I, I have to say that. I think we've made a mess of it in the last stages. We were in the final stretch and we've got it wrong. Economically, things should go well. Politically, they'll be fairly tight and fairly constrained, more than, of course, they have been under the British. Mm. But I don't have any kind of disaster scenario for Hong Kong. I think things will go well. And I think uh, Mr. Tung Chi Hua will do a good job.